lot of rock bands have a saxophone, and nobody else had Clarence Clemens. Yes, the name of the outfit is Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, but that sound was always so different, in large part because of that shiny brass secret weapon and the big black man playing it. And once upon a time, even that was a novelty. It was in the immediate wake of the civil rights era, after all. Right after Bruce Springsteen burst onto the scene, we learned he was part of a package deal. Bruce wrote and sang the songs, but those solos, those hooks, that soul, that was all Clarence. Everything changed when the big man joined the band. He achieved icon status as a musician, meaning when you heard it, you knew it was him. And they were a band of brothers, blood brothers. The two men were tight. Clarence always called it a love affair among men, and Bruce felt the same way. Together we told a story of the possibilities of friendship. A story older than the ones that I was writing. And a story that I could never have told without him at my side. I want to thank you, big man. I love you so much. He was the son of a fish merchant in Norfolk, Virginia. In person and on stage, he was as big as a house. Big enough to have played college football in Maryland. But on his way to an NFL career with the Cleveland Browns, a car accident blew out his knee. Then he decided to make a living blowing his horn. And on a sunny Father's Day Sunday in Asbury Park, the thought of not hearing that sound again was just too much for some of the faithful. You choked up. It's tough, you know. Uh, this is the end of an era. In a photograph taken 36 years ago today, Bruce is seen leaning on Clarence Clemens on the cover of Born to Run, and he leaned on him a lot. The man he called the Big Kahuna, the Duke of Paducah, was the rock of that rock band. The question is, what are we going to do when it comes time to play Jungle Land? <laughs> <laughs> 